welcome to this week's episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens. My name is Nathan Brockman, and on this week's episode, we're going to visit with Sarah, an outdoor horticulturist here at the gardens, about the hydrangeas, and then I'll take you on a closer look of what it actually takes for a butterfly to emerge from its chrysalis. Hi, I'm Sarah Remery, outdoor horticulturist at Ryman Gardens, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the panicle hydrangea, Hydrangea paniculata. The panicle hydrangea is probably the most hardy of the hydrangea species, spanning from zones three to eight. It's widely adaptable in the landscape, preferring to have moist to well-drained soils. However, it will not do extremely wet soils. They thrive in sun to partial shade and they bloom on their new wood, so it's okay to deadhead them after they start to look brown at the end of the summer. They will bloom from about July until September, sometimes October, depending on your zone. Then in the springtime, it's best to cut them down and or rejuvenate them in either winter or early spring, so that way they don't get extremely out of control. Generally speaking, um, the cultivars that are in production are much better than the, the straight species. And they range in size from anywhere between 6 and 18 feet tall and 6 and 15 feet wide, dependent upon the cultivar. Hydrangeas have two types of flowers. They have the sterile flowers, which are actually the showy flowers um, that you see of the inflorescence, but really they're not flowers. The large part is a bract, which is a, a modified petal. And you can see just barely in the center there is the, the sterile flower. And then they also have fertile flowers, which are the ones that can actually um, be pollinated. And these are the smaller ones. You can see a cluster of them here, and there's one. So if you're out at Ryman Gardens, don't miss the opportunity to see the pink diamond hydrangea paniculatas in their full bloom and this glorious. They're behind the home production garden just on the west side. The emergence windows here at Ryman Gardens are a major attraction. They give the visitors a chance to see the butterflies and moths come out of their chrysalids or cocoons. Today we're going to watch as the blue morpho, Morpho polites, comes out of its chrysalis in a time-lapse video. The footage you are currently watching is running at five times the normal speed. As is the case in many butterflies, it's possible to see the blue morpho through the chrysalid before it actually emerges. Now one of the secret weapons and the reason that they can pack themselves into such a small space while they're in the chrysalis is that the wings of the butterflies are actually very small and pliable while they're in their chrysalis. Once they come out though, they will then take fluids from their bodies, which are stored up from their caterpillar stage, and then pump those down into their wings. This is kind of like blowing up a balloon. Only in the case of butterflies, the fluid that they pump in is then drawn back out of the veins of the butterfly's wings and then expelled. The empty chasms that are left from the fluid then dry and harden, forming the structure of the butterfly's wings. The time is the butterflies emerging from its chrysalis is a really dangerous time. There's a good chance that predators or weather conditions could actually cause them to fall off of their chrysalis or whatever medium they happen to be hanging from, such as a branch. If that happens, there's a good chance that they won't be able to spread their wings properly. That means that they may not be able to fly, or if they are able to fly, they may not be able to fly well, which means that Either you know, males or females may not mate with them, or they'll be picked off by a predator as they move from one point to another. The entire process of emergence from the chrysalid, uh, depending on species and size of the butterfly, can be as short as two minutes to over 20 minutes, as is in the case of the blue morphos. Now, once they get their wings spread, It'll take several more minutes before they're actually dry enough so they can fly.
Here we can see the blue morpho as it's spreading its wings slightly, getting ready for flight. And before you know it, this butterfly will be dry enough. It can be released into the Christina Ryman butterfly wing, which is done twice daily here at the gardens. I hope you found this week's episode of Growing Up Ryman Gardens both educational and entertaining. And if you have more questions about this week's topics or would like to see more videos, please visit our website at rhymandgardens.com.